So the big question is this. How do you lose all the weight that you want and actually keep it off for the rest of your life while trying to make sense of all the noise that comes from the weight loss industry? That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. G'day guys and welcome to the next episode of the Weight Loss Secrets Podcast. My name is Baron Grant and I'm really excited to be with you again to share some tips and tricks about weight loss and how you can keep it off. Once you lose the weight, you can keep it off for the rest of your life. Um, and that's always the message. You don't need any pills or potions or any of that sort of stuff. You just need to make good decisions and you can change your life for the rest of your life. That's what we're really after and that's what this podcast is all about. So we're going to answer all those questions as we go through each episode. Now, as always, my podcast is brought to you by Ditching the Diet. So if you want to learn some more tips and tricks, uncover some more secrets and learn how simple weight loss actually is, just click the link below and you can um, grab yourself a copy of my new book, uh, Ditching the Diet, and you can also book a call directly with me and have a chat on the phone and we can work out whether we can actually work together and I can help you on your journey as well. So with all that said, I want to start off today by telling a little story about my daughter, Olivia. So as many of you already know, I have five children and my youngest is Olivia, she's nine. But a few years ago, um, Olivia participated in the Premier's Active Challenge, and that was before school each day, she would head there and do some laps of a 500 meter track. So it wasn't just for her, like all the kids would go and there'd be a big crowd, um, and they would do um, as many laps of this 500 meter track as you could possibly do. Now, she had a goal that she'd set. Now, Olivia at this time, she was in like prep or grade one, uh, as my memory breaks, but she was little, right? But she said, mum, I want to do 100 laps, 100 laps of the 500 metre track, which is a pretty good, good effort. Over the course of the month, she would end up doing sort of five, six or seven laps a day to be able to get there, which is a big ask. You know, 500 metres, you're, you're talking two, two and a half kilometres um, each day in about a 25 minute, half an hour period to be able to get it done. And she's only little. And so she started on the process all gung-ho and she'd get there for the first day with Davina and she would start her on the track. Um, and on her journey, she'd, she'd start to feel a little bit sick of it pretty quick. So after about, I don't know, a lap or two, she'd be like, oh, mum, my, my chest hurts or my legs hurt or I, I think I'm going to throw up. She said all these different funny little one-liners over the course of this um, you know, uh, challenge day after day. So she'd say to her mum, I feel sick or I'm tired. And, and Davina had the option there. And Davina sort of went, do I encourage her to keep going or do I let her give up? And that's sort of not the way we roll. <laughs> and so Davina said, nah, you set a goal. You want to get 100. Let's go get 100. And so Davina encouraged her every day. And normally about two laps in, Olivia was like, oh, this is too hard. I don't really want to do it anymore. <laughs> but, you know, true Davina style and true our family style, I guess, Davina continued to encourage her to keep going and getting those laps done. And um, Davina would say this phrase that Livy started to say sort of as it as she went through the month. So you know, she might be up to her second or third or fourth lap and Livy's whining and moaning and complaining about this is a bit too hard because you have to jog a bit, walk a bit, jog a bit. And Davina would say to her, hey, you know what, Liv? Just because it's hard doesn't mean we quit. And so that became like this catch cry in our family um, with lots of different things. But as the, as the weeks progressed throughout this challenge, Olivia would still have those moments of like, oh man, this is tough. You know, this is really hard. I want to do it today. And then she'd go, oh, she'd just like she'd get a second when she'd run off from her mum and say, come on, mum, just because it's hard doesn't mean we quit. And she'd, she'd continue on her journey. Now, Olivia, over the course of that month, she committed to it and she did it every single day. And she ended up getting 115 laps over the course of that month, which frankly was an incredible effort for a little, little kid to be able to get that done. But it was hard. It hurt. It wasn't comfortable, but she did it anyway. She kept going. And the great thing about it is just because it's hard, she didn't quit. And that's really the message for today. I want you to think about your life at the moment. Are you quitting on stuff? Are you quitting on eating healthy because it's hard, because it's not comfortable, because it's not easy. Do you quit on it? Could we do better? Could we not quit on it? We all quit on stuff, but how can we not quit on getting healthy? How can we make that such a part of our life, an ingrained 
habitual change in our life that we never go back. I've worked with lots of people who have gone through some really challenging things throughout the course of the time that we were working together. Um, we have one lady that we work with who, in the course of her journey, she lost her dad um, and um, had some real challenging experiences at work and with her son as a single mom, and she just continued on the journey. Her attitude was, I've got to keep going no matter what because this is saving my life. This is not a hindrance in my life. This is saving my life. I've got to keep going. I had another guy who lost his nephew while we were working together, and these guys, they didn't quit because that's, that's a catalyst for so many people to quit, to stop, to give up and go, no, nah, I can't do it. I've got too much going on in my life. But the end goal is too important. Being healthy is too important, so we need to not quit on that process. And I want you to think about your life right now. Is work hard? Is life hard? Is relationships hard? Is it hard with your kids? Is it hard with whatever? Your extracurricular activities outside of work. You could be involved in a footy club or a netball club and there could be like challenges in that relationship or those relationships in that, that environment. But we have to look at ourselves and go, right, I'm trying to achieve a goal and just because it's hard right now doesn't mean I quit. If I choose to exercise every day, when life gets hard, I can't just give up on that. If I choose to eat healthy every day, when life gets hard, I can't just quit on that. Otherwise, you never get to where you want to be. Um, you've just got to keep working through the process. I think a great example of this is one of my favorite sporting moments in the history of the world. Um, I'm a big AFL fan, but this, the, my favorite sporting moment, one of them doesn't even come from AFL. It comes from, it comes from cycling. And it was when Cadell Evans won the Tour de France in 2011. He probably was one of the favourites to win, but he, ha he was up against it. His team wasn't as strong as some of the other teams. And I won't go through the whole story, but it came down to the second last major stage of the, of, um, the tour. And he was in a situation where he was within reach, but then some really hard things happened on that stage. This was Alpe d'Huez. It was one of the biggest climbs, one of the hardest, steepest climbs of the tour. At this stage, he was within striking distance of, of being able to win the tour. And so without going into all the detail, a few of the groups, you know, shot off. Well, Cadell Evans got a, a puncture. <laughs> and so I had to change his bike. So that set him back. And then he just was not up with the leaders where he needed to be. Um, but what was interesting is the guy who took off out front um, was Andy Schleck. And he one of his main you know, rivals to win the Tour de France. And... And as, as Andy took off and he's up the mountain, off he goes, Cadell Evans was left to do a lot of the work on his own. His team now was, uh, was gone. And any, any people that sort of watch a little bit of cycling or don't watch cycling, you know, it's a team game. You've got one guy in that team that's going to actually win the tour or be a chance to win the tour. But you've got people who have different roles. Now it was, and then when they get into the mountains at the end of the tour, it's the main guy comes to the front after they've been protected all the way through so they haven't had to work as hard. They, you know, they're right on the coattails of the other bikes and now they're on their own. They've got to go get it done. So Andy Schleck from one team, is he's out in front and he's killing it and he's minutes ahead of Cadell Evans. And we're like, oh, no, he's in real trouble. Um, and then the people, he, so normally they go in groups and so Cadell Evans starts to break away. The problem was you've got people in this group that it's not in their interest to let Cadell Evans win. So they don't want to help him. So in cycling, even if you're not in the same team, for the vast majority of the race, you'll actually help each other climb mountains. So one will go in front and the other one will drag along. And so this experience was, you know, what Cadell expected as he started to shoot up the mountain. But Andy Schleck was out front and Frank Schleck was in this group with Cadell Evans, who is Andy's brother. <laughs> and so Frank is like, I'm going to hold Cadell back. I'm not going to help him at all. And so because I want my brother to go and win. So there's so much strategy and stuff happening throughout that, that race and that part of the race. But long story short, Cadell Evans was left in this position where there was a group that he was now leading, who they were chasing behind him, to go and chase up to Andy Schleck. Now, at this point, he was gone in this race. He was minutes behind. But he grit his teeth, like everything was against him, everything. And he grit his teeth and he rode up this mountain. Nobody helped him. So all these people that were tacking on behind him, um, Thomas Vokler and Frank Schleck, these guys, they're not helping him at all. They, he would at times turn around and give a bit of a look to say, you know, someone else give me a chop out and come out to the front of this, this group and let me ride behind you for a minute and nobody would come. 
he did like this superhuman effort up this mountain and ended up gaining time on significant amounts of time on um, Andy Schleck, who was out in front. Long story short, he got close enough to then beat him in the time trial in the final stage and he won and he won the Tour de France. What was incredible about that experience, everything went wrong for him that day, everything, but he didn't quit. He didn't fall off the back and, and just start, you know, just give up and throw his hands up in the air and, and not win. He went, he just went harder, you know, it's a superhuman effort, but what he did, he just rode harder. He worked harder. Just because it's hard, Cadell Evans didn't quit. And we look at those guys and we go, they're superhuman. No, they're not. They just work hard. They just work insanely hard, insanely hard. And I think he's a great example of when crap stuff happens, we don't get to quit because if we do quit, we never get the result. He'd already been a runner-up and been very close to winning the Tour de France. This was his shot and he was not letting it, he was not letting it go. And so I want you to think about your life right now and, and are you going after what you want like Cadell Evans does? where he was just like, I'm getting this no matter what. I got my shot now and here we go. And just dig in harder and push harder and grit your teeth, get a bit of job dog jaw and keep going. Um, or do we fall off? Do we quit because it gets hard? And are we so good, so good at making up reasons or excuses that we feel better about those reasons when we tell ourselves that I didn't do it because of this and this and this and this. So let's think about it. Are you quitting on stuff or are you not? My challenge for you is to go away after this one, this, this podcast, this message, and I want you to think about those things that maybe you did quit on and the things that you still want that you didn't quite get because you quit. And I want you to recommit and go, right, I still want that thing. And if that's weight loss, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. So if you're still 10 kilos off your goal, 20 kilos off your goal, 50 kilos off your goal, I want you to recommit and go, no matter what, I'm not quitting. If I work hard for four weeks in a row and the scales don't move, I'm still not going to quit. I'm still going to make good decisions about my food because that's what you need to do anyway. Whether the scales go down or whether they stay the same, whether they go up, you're still going to make good decisions about your food. So no matter how hard it is, don't quit. Keep going. Grit your teeth. Just because it's hard doesn't mean we quit. <laughs> Thank you.